Hey guys, Kyle here, and today we are going to add a custom MBT recipe to our game using my item database pack. Now, if you don't have the pack or don't know about the pack, check out the description. There's a link to the trailer as well as the first uh, tutorial on the pack, which this will cover most of the basics of that, but I'll just be brushing over a few things, not talking too in depth about that. So let's start with the original packs crafter and we'll work our way up to mbt crafting so the way that this pack works is it adds items with ids to the game you can check out some settings by doing trigger item menu you can check out the help which gives links to videos including this one and you can uninstall it but in this case we want to go to recipes and we're going to turn vanilla recipes on if you turn vanilla recipes on the crafter will be quite considerably slower since there is way more things it has to check but of course you add all the vanilla recipes in the original crafting table to the game if that's what you want personally i won't be using that i'm go i would rather design the custom crafter so that it's something the player obtains and then only has access to certain recipes in it but if you wanted the vanilla you can now there are two crafters in this system there's a barrel or an ender crafter they work exactly the same they're just one of them is using a barrel and one of them is using an ender chest so to place them you click on either of these or run the function that it tells you right here the reason i did not implement a method uh, of getting this crafter in survival is this is a utility pack i am not coming up with systems for you to do that if i was making a data pack for a server, I don't even need to have a way to get this crafter. Uh, if I, I would just, I don't know, have one in the spawn or something. If I was creating a survival, I might have, it could be any recipe, magical way to obtain it. Maybe it's drop crafting. Maybe you just get it from a loot table. I don't know. That's up to you, man. But you just have to run these commands somehow to place it. And how you run those commands or make the game run those commands is up to you but I've implemented the crafter here for you. So the crafter uses the item database and it needs the item database, which essentially gives an ID to every custom item in the game. And we'll kind of go over how that works, some benefits, some drawbacks. So every item in the game has an ID. Uh, I also, another thing to note is I have the vanilla linker setting on so that all vanilla items I give to myself get the custom IDs that they need. That's kind of important for vanilla recipes. So let's go ahead and look at some of the recipes that you can do with this uh, just to showcase some of its functionality. So if I go into here, some of the vanilla recipes, one would be obviously there's a pressure plate, but let's go ahead and make a chest using various pieces of wood. There you go. Another thing you could do is you can mirror recipes. So you can make a bow facing that way or you can make a bow facing this way, this way. You can also make a hoe with mirroring and also shifting. It could be over there or it could be over here. It also has shapeless crafting. So I can make fermented spider eye like this or 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 like this, any kind of combination. It also has uh, shift crafting, so let me go ahead and just show you that. So if I put 10 there, it will make 40 stairs, and there you go, 40 stairs. I can also put maybe 2 or 3, and there's like maybe an extra 4 on the diagonal, so this will make 12 more with leaving the diagonal, and obviously this can also be mirrored. So that's kind of all the functionality that the crafter itself has and all of the vanilla items being implemented, all the vanilla recipes, you can go ahead and test the other ones yourself. There, If there is any bugs, let me know in the Discord. So now we're going to add our own recipes that aren't vanilla to the game. So inside the UI, there is a tab here called recipes. And you'll notice that the sidebar kind of slides up and down until it hits a max as you go. And there are other tabs, but I talk very in depth of how the uh, custom item database works in the previous video. This one, we're going to be talking about recipes. So recipes are pretty simple. You're going to have a page similar to this, and you're going to have a arrow that you can go down, right? And one of those arrows will eventually stop going down, and you will have a sections that are green here. 
So when you see the green, it means the thing is not a new recipe, but if you put stuff in it, it will become a new recipe. So we're going to do that. So we're going to make a recipe for an emerald sword. So we're going to go down here and we're going to go like this. And now it is a new recipe. Once I've filled this, the array is built. It's there. Okay. Uh, you can choose between shaped and shapeless, but we're going to do shaped and we're going to do a sword, emerald sword, right? And I can put it anywhere in here. It will all be the same. Now, obviously, I don't want to just shove this in here because this is a default diamond sword. So I need to make a custom MBT item that is used by the database. So I'm going to put it in the database right here. So now there's a new entry in the database for emerald swords. I can click on it to grab a copy and go down to the recipe down here and go ahead and shove it in there. So now when I go around, it's, it's there. There you go. Very good. So let's go ahead and give ourselves the sticks and the emeralds and let's hop into this crafter. Let's go ahead and throw it in the way that we have it and there's an emerald sword but this is also an emerald sword and this is also an emerald sword and these are all emerald swords very nice now one thing to note is you could have a situation where you want to fix the emerald sword so instead of having minus 1.6 attack speed you want it faster you want minus one so i'm going to go into the database and i'm going to update it just like that the one is in there and look at all these, they all have one. Very nice. So that adds the version control. Uh, I forget exactly how I designed the version control because uh, it does have to be slightly performance optimized. So there is potential where if you change the diamond sword, it will not change it for everybody that is online on your server, but when they reconnect or put the item in a chest or access the item somewhere else, really reconnecting is the thing. Uh, then it will be updated. So I would say the best thing to do if you're messing with the database and changing items, do that when everybody's offline or kick everybody and have them relog. That would be ideal, but I think it should be fine. It updated for my inventory right here, but I really forget uh, what how I implemented it. And uh, it, there is potential there to have some issues. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's not perfect. Anyways, so that's everything. Uh, you can make a shapeless, but uh, here's just some other examples of some custom ones I have. So I'll just go through that. And uh, it also works with Ender Crafter. So the Ender Crafter is implemented here because you could want to have a thing where people can't steal. So if I put items in here, somebody else can walk up, right click on it and take all my items from the place. Now that is not really a problem most of the time in safe survival worlds or just with friends. But in a lot of situations, that could happen. So the Ender Crafter is here so that if you have maybe a crafting table in the server spawn and people can easily come and go and steal stuff, uh, this will prevent that because it's player based, player by player based. And it does not delete your previous Ender items. Sometimes it'll keep the crafter stuff there for a sec if you're looking too close to it. But yeah, it, it, it keeps your original. And uh, if you ever have a situation where the ender crafter is still accessible i tested it if you click anything it, it just behaves like a regular ender crafter and uh, you will get your items back eventually uh another thing to note is i uh, implemented this so the hoppers cannot suck out the items uh and also if you break this then uh, all the items will dis uh, disappear will not be there and uh, clicking this you don't get to take these items uh, but yeah, that's that's the entire Ender Crafter. Now talking about some efficiency, let's hop into a super flat world so you can see kind of where the efficiency is going into. So the thing that makes this all possible is every item has a number. So in order to see if a item rest, if a shape inside your grid matches a recipe, all it has to do is transform your input data and compare numbers in the input grid with recipe grid numbers. So instead of comparing if MBT is the same, you compare if numbers are the same. Uh, so then with that in mind, it is quite efficient. And that's really the main reason why things actually work. Now I will show you, this is the graph. This is what it standard looks like when I've accessed a recipe. Uh, if I have not accessed anything, then it'll be even better. But if I'm like in technically still inside, it'll look like this. Now, when I create this recipe, you will see a few spikes show up and that's natural. And we'll talk about that. But if I just do this, you'll see that is the efficiency when I have a couple recipes in my database. That spike doesn't mean anything. But you see really no difference, right? You saw like no difference, right? 
that's because it's a recipe that I already have in the database. And sometimes you might get like a bunch of uh, erroneous items uh, from this if you have a bunch of these things lined up. It won't happen to players that aren't modded. They shouldn't have access to this thing anyways. You shouldn't let them. Uh, so the main reason that it's so lightweight is there isn't a ton of recipes to parse yet. But if I add the vanilla, then it will be a lot slower. And I'll show you how much slower. Uh, so, oh, I guess I do have the vanilla. I think I have to just toggle it because it was uh, dated. All right. So if I go like this, you'll see a little spike show up. If I go like this, you'll see another kind of smaller spike show up. Uh, it really depends on how many the, uh, items there are. So if I go like this, you'll see kind of a medium spike show up, you know. Uh, so you can see a little bit of spiking going on. It's uh, because it has to parse so many things, but it's not that bad. I would say it's pretty good comparatively to other crafters I've seen. And obviously it only really does any kind of computations when the input has changed, when somebody's changed something inside the recipe. Otherwise it's fine. I haven't done a stress test of having like a ton of these on a server at once. You guys can go ahead and do a stress test if you want. It's good enough for single player and not having a ton of these at the same time in the same place. I would assume that you wouldn't be placing like a thousand, like making a ginormous cube out of them. And I would also assume that that would be pretty laggy. That's just kind of how it works. Anyways, that's pretty much it. If you were a little bit concerned, another thing of notes is if you were concerned on how the uh, Ender Crafter works. So here's my Ender Crafter, right? Uh, let me put a helmet on. I still keep my items and the helmet is the same as the original. Now, if the helmet, uh, now if I go like this, you'll notice my helmet gets cursive binding that I can only take off in creative and that's where the data for my ender chest is stored. Uh, obviously you don't take it off if you're in creative. And if I already have cursive binding helmet on, you can't use this to remove cursive binding. It still has cursive binding, but the items are here and also it clears the MBT so you don't have a ginormous MBTs saved on a bunch of helmets. Uh, that's just a side note. Anyways, if you thought this was cool, please leave a like, subscribe. As of this video, the download will be available for the pack, so go ahead and jump in and check it out. There's a few other things to check out that I might make tutorials on, such as the custom brewers and the custom smithing table recipes, which are not quite 100% completed as of this point, so mainly it's just the item database and the crafter. Anyways, if you like that, leave a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.